Regular viewers might be familiar with the work of Professor Ed Lester and his group. High temperature, high pressure system. It's like a kettle, but it's gone a bit far beyond uh, what a kettle can do. They create state-of-the-art reactors like these, which mix water and other products at incredibly high temperatures and pressures, resulting in tiny particles in solution. Because we, we're, we're not on plastic cups anymore, we're, we're getting more classy with tea mugs. We've spoken about it many times and you can go and watch all the old videos. If you can manage, uh, manufacture at kilo per day scale, you potentially could service a lot of industrial markets. Now it's become a bit of an obsession for Ed. Here in another video, we showed him make a reactor from the coffee machine in his office. Well, not content with that, Ed now wants to take things to the next level. He's again going to be making a homemade reactor, but this time at a much larger scale. And this is the first of two videos about that. We're just providing like a barrier of protection. As so long as there's no lorries, we'll be all right. <laughs> we could actually put some burgers on the barbecue as it's running. I'm sure there are no health and safety implications for that. Right, what we're, <laughs> what we're doing is, uh, because of the amazing success of turning a coffee machine into a, um, a nanoparticle rig, we thought we'd do, go one better, one bigger, and uh, that we'd make it out of um, items from a hardware store, and we'd make a pilot scale reactor this time instead of a small one, so that we could actually uh, produce large scale quantities of materials. So we decided that we'd just use components from a hardware store with a maximum budget of a thousand pounds. Right, this is a very expensive barbecue from a certain DIY shop that's got an orange sign on it. It will provide some of the power to heat up the water to go into the, uh, to the reactor. If we could get all the heat out of one of these barbecues, we've got 12 kilowatts. So they're the gas burners that we need. So that's where the heat's gonna come from. We have to try and configure the pipe work so that we can get all the heat out without uh, getting the pipe work too hot. So it's a fast flow rate, so we need quite a bit of heat. So we need two of these barbecues. And if that's not good enough, we'll go all environmental and we'll have a little biomass uh, uh, incinerator. So we'll use that for the extra heat because again, they thoughtfully put little holes in to allow us to put pipe work in and out. Depending on how the pressure wash is built, it's gonna be an easier or more difficult task to put it all together. So if you look on here, the maximum pressure that it can generate is 110 bar. And if you buy a really expensive one, they go up to about 160 bar. Right, the internals of this pipe is the most important point. If we can chop these pipes and integrate in the other features like pressure gauges and so on, we can probably make the system work. If we can't, then we're jiggered but I'm fairly certain that it's going to be of a width that we can actually then swage lock pressure fittings onto so that we can actually join it onto the rest of the gear. We're not going to put this in the barbecue. That wouldn't go well. We bought this one because it has uh, different nozzles as well. The flow will come down the pipe, down there, and it gets to a constricted orifice at the end of different shapes, depending on which one you're using, and that's what generates the pressure. It's just pushing the liquid until it gets to there and that's where the pressure is generated in the system because it wants to get out and escape. So that's our back pressure regulator. So normally we would pay how much for BPR? 1400. Yeah, so it's like thousands for a BPR, but they've thoughtfully provided a BPR in the, uh, in the package, which is quite useful. We also need precursor solutions. So we thought these buckets serve rather nicely. So one will feed the precursor solution and then we'll have another one feeding the, the water into the system. And then we'll probably have one of these water butts full of beer and ice. If we're going to get the barbecue theme going, I think we should perhaps think about that one. 110 bar is beyond the critical pressure for certain fluids, not water, unfortunately. So we're not going to make a supercritical water reactor, uh, but it will be subcritical. So it's going to be really hot, very high pressure. So maybe we'll get to 300 degrees or so but we will be able to make nanomaterials at that condition, so we don't have to, uh, to run it all the way. Okay, so what we've got is um, we've got feed water to this one here, that pump, that will push water through these heaters. We also have another pump which is taking cold precursor, dissolved precursor, into the reactor, so it doesn't go through the heaters, it goes straight into the reactor. Particles form, product is, then flows out, into this receptacle here, which will have ice in it and water, okay? 
and then it will be cool enough, it will actually just be cold water, and then it will actually then run through the back pressure regulator out into a container, which will probably be this one here. We just have to chop one of these cables in the workshop and get them to, uh, to tell us what's inside, and then we maybe strip it back, work out whether we can swage lock pipe onto there, and then start buying one or two of the steel parts that go in the barbecue. Yeah, yeah it's looking good. I think it could be successful. He's left himself some wiggle room there. I think yeah. it could be successful. <laughs>